Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about how to record desktop audio directly into Ableton. Now this can be useful for a variety of different things. Personally I use it to directly record things that I'm playing on the desktop into Ableton, but you can also use it to look at analyzers if you want to analyze a sound source that is not sitting within Ableton directly. For those who are a fan of my feedback streams that I do every other Sunday, this is how I actually get the audio inside of Ableton so that I can show it on my analyzers. So as you can see, we're right here in Ableton and if I play a sample that is sitting outside of Ableton, in this case it will be a small snippet from a track that I've been working on in collaboration with Mind B. How many are like Earth? You can see that I was able to record the sample directly into Ableton and I can also use it to show analyzers. As you can see right here, the analyzers are showing. So the way that I do this is through this application here. This is called Voice Meter Banana. And you can see I have all of my inputs here, as well as my different outputs. A1 is my speaker output here. So I have individual control over my own speakers as well as what I'm sending to different locations around my PC. And you can see that everything is being sent to this system here. So if I play the track again. You can see that the track is playing into this track here. This is a virtual input, so you can send audio to it. And then it's going into my speaker track, which is again A1, as well as in both virtual tracks. Now the virtual tracks are really handy for me when I'm doing things like live streaming as well as when I'm having lessons with my students because then I can send the voice as well as Ableton audio and any other audio that I need in one channel already summed through the microphone. So the inputs that I have are my microphone here. You can see when I'm speaking that this volume actually goes up. I have a virtual cable in here which is both an output and an input linked together. And then we have another microphone here which is capturing the front panel of my PC in which I have clocked in my laptop. For the virtual inputs, this one is serving only purely for my Ableton. So if I play this. Like Earth. Like Earth. You could see that it was going into this track here. Unfortunately, I have to switch back and forth and cut out the section in between in the edit because if I start or stop playing it, I obviously have to be in focus of Ableton itself. The second virtual input is controlling everything else that is happening on the desktop, which means that I have separate control over where I route my Ableton audio to, as well as all other audio sources that are present on my PC. So this means that within Ableton itself, if I go into my audio settings, you can see that I have voice meter output and voice meter input set as my input and my output device. Now this might look a little bit strange because the input is set to output and the output is set to input, but you have to look at it from the perspective of voice meter itself. The input into Ableton is the output from voice meter. So that is regarding this track right here, which is what's happening inside of Ableton. As you can see here, B1 is inside of Ableton and all of my other desktop audio sources as well. The microphone itself is excluded. So that means that my microphone is not being picked up by Ableton. With regards to the input, this input selection right here makes sure that it goes into the desired track that I wanted to. If I wanted to go into the second virtual input, I could set it to input aux, which is this one here but I have it into the first one. So that is sending Ableton's audio right here into this track. Now this does mean that there's a small problem of loopback. We're sending out Ableton audio and it also gets sent back into the input itself. That means if I create an audio track here and I set it to external input, it automatically goes onto auto, which means that it will actually be listening to the input source that you're pumping into it. You want to set the monitoring to off. This makes sure that you're not hearing what you're recording and therefore you don't get this feedback loop that you would otherwise get. So this is my audio setup. This is how I route things around inside of my PC. I mainly wanted to use this video to just show you voice meter banana and kind of how it works. I know it looks a little bit complex, but you get used to this. This is a very intuitive program with all of the routing setups and all of the different tracks. And if you need to access more settings or properties, you can see that you have auxiliary input here and voice meter input here, as well as the outputs that are sitting right here in the recording section. Again, you have to look at it from the perspective of voice meter itself. 
Finally, quickly, the way that I make sure that all of the other desktop audio goes into the different track, into the auxiliary track, is by setting it as my default device. So that's everything that I wanted to talk about. I hope that you found this video interesting and helpful. If you did, let me know by leaving a like. That way I know that you guys enjoyed it. Now, if you're new here and you want to see more of what I do, more of the tutorials that I make, then make sure that you're subscribed. You can also turn on bell notifications to get notified by YouTube whenever I upload something. But that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.